call it 1900 hours 25 minutes lost another one never gets any easier sometimes I, I feel like I don't even deserve that degree I printed off Google about 10 minutes ago I just thought I could make a difference, make a difference in just one gun's life. It always ends the same. I know what you're thinking. You're sitting there judging me. I can hear you. Thinking, Doc, that's not even a real stethoscope. No, it's not. I couldn't find a real one. I looked. Walmart's place set was all I found. not even a real doctor well not in this country well pretty much any country with background checks and running water hey everybody welcome i am doc shaw and today we are taking a look at the chinese sks this is actually one that was uh kind of vietnam era you know military turn in and uh, I picked this one up from Palomato. I think Palomato and Classic Firearms were both running kind of the same batch of rifles. And, uh, you know, just, just a really cool rifle. We're gonna check it out. And, uh, you know, this thing was probably the worst Cosmoline cleaning that I've ever had to do. It was absolutely just atrocious. Uh, and I'm sure pretty much all of them were the same way. Uh, when a rifle's stored for over 20 years, it can get pretty nasty. So I'm hoping that uh, we can kind of go through some tips, some cleaning, and uh, maybe, maybe you're new. Maybe you are absolutely new to the SKS platform. You know nothing about it. And somehow you missed the hundreds of other videos about taking care of this. And you found the guy with like seven subscribers. Don't know how you managed to do that, but I'm glad you're here and hopefully I can help you out. All right, guys, uh, of course, you know, we're on the internet, people know everything, but we're gonna go ahead and prove to everybody it is safe. Don't know if you can see that. No rounds in the chamber, no rounds in the magazine. There's not even any rounds in this building, okay? I'm in a tiny metal shop in central Texas. There's no ammo in here, okay? The only thing that's in here is Black Widows, Scorpions, and uh, Heat Stroke. So, uh, you know what? We're going to go ahead and set the rifle down. We're going to go over what will you need to clean this. Step one, the rifle itself. That sounds pretty obvious, but you would be surprised. And then we need a cleaning agent. Now, the uh, recommended and kind of my go-to is actually just regular mineral spirits. And uh, it uh, works really good. It really cuts through all the grease and it doesn't harm the wood or the bluing or really anything else on it. Uh, I don't believe you're supposed to drink it or give it to small children. So, you know, if you were planning on doing that, uh, that's tough. Uh, let's see what else. You're gonna need some shop rags, some paper towels, something like that. I don't re recommend your regular bath towels. This is some pretty nasty stuff. This isn't something that you wanna to try to stick in your washing machine because your wife will hate you, the dryer will catch on fire, and the insurance won't pay for it because they say you're a moron. Anyways, uh, spray bottle's helpful. You can put some of this in a spray bottle, kind of squirt it around. Uh, that works really good on the lighter, uh, the, uh, the lighter coatings of it. This rifle was not light. Uh, they said in their description, heavy cosmoline. What they meant was absolutely caked. Uh, the bore and the gas tube was completely packed. Couldn't even see daylight through it. So when I say this is the absolute worst that I've ever had to clean, that I, I do not exaggerate very often. Uh, the last thing you will need, uh, I like to use a, uh, a little brush, a little toothbrush. This one looks like I've been cleaning the sewers with it, but uh, it's actually just cosmoline. That's how nasty this stuff was. Uh, you can get these for, you know, like, you know, less than a buck at Walmart. Uh, you can get just a regular nylon brush. Q-tips. Q-tips work great. I do not have any, but I did use some. That's why I don't have any. You will need a punch or some type of tool to take down 
the trigger group, and you may need a hammer, just depending on how tight that pin is. So, we got everything together, and we're gonna get into breaking this rifle, but. How's the hair? Receding. Ouch. Not wrong, but ouch. Uh, all right, uh, camera, we might bring the camera in a little bit closer for some of this disassembly. Uh, one thing that I really wanted to do to help with the Cosmoline, uh, it, this was packed, guys. I took off the dust cover, and it was so packed that I really, really wanted to do this first step. If you live somewhere kind of down in the south like I do, if you couldn't tell from the accent, uh, the beginning of the week it was triple digits several days in a row, and uh, once I got this in, it cooled off. But when it's really hot, what I like to do is take, you know, a big black trash bag and you can stick the rifle in there, tie it up, and you can set it like the shop, you know, cooks like an oven when it gets really hot. I could set it in here. I could stand it out in the yard in the sun, you know, somewhere safe where people aren't going to steal it or it's not going to, you know, you know, get trampled on. But uh, the actual just heat from absorbing in the black bag, it will just kind of liquefy some of this stuff and it will just create a big pool in the bottom of the bag. So... You know, uh, you still will have to clean it, but it definitely helps break up some of the big chunks. And unfortunately, I, get, I didn't get a chance to do that. So I, I just kind of went old fashioned with it. So uh, we'll get the camera in a little closer here. We will, I'm not gonna completely just take this down to bare bones, guys. We're gonna do a, you know, just a good solid filled strip. All right, uh, if you are interested in how to take every little pin and screw out, I believe that Eric from Iraq Veteran 8888, he has a very good video on that. It's about an hour long, so I mean, it is some detailed gunsmithing. I'll try to remember to put a link to that. Uh, to, but to be honest, if you, if you, you, you know, just type in like SKS cleaning and disassembly, you're gonna find him a long time before you find me. So I'll be really surprised if this link actually helps. So alrighty guys, uh, give me one second and we will get to breaking this down. All right, guys, we're going to get the camera in, off the tripod, get it in here a little bit closer. As we can see, our chamber's empty, no ammo in the magazine. Uh, your bolt does lock back on the empty mag. Uh, you don't want to push that down because when you push it down, the bolt goes forward. So, you know, don't, don't stick your finger in there, guys. It, it can hurt. Uh, some people will grind off that bolt hole open. Uh, most military, you know, turn-ins will not have that issue, but some can. So what we're going to go ahead and do here, guys, we're going to pull this lever that will open up our magazine, allowing the bolt to freely cycle without holding open. Our next step, this little lever right here, all we're going to do is lift this lever straight up and pull out on it. Maybe if I can get it. There we go. All right. Uh, this one's actually fairly easy. Sometimes there it is. Sometimes you might have to use a uh, like a punch or something, a screwdriver, to just kind of pick up on that tab. I didn't have to do that for this one, but, uh, you know, some people do. All right, guys, so this is our dust cover. It just slides right off. Sometimes the recoil spring will help you push that off. And you might be able to see there, it still actually has some gunk on it, guys. I spent probably two hours scrubbing with a brush and a rag to, you know, get this stuff off, and it was... It's just so much, like I said, this is easily one of the worst ones that I've ever done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get me some paper towels here. All right, so recoil springs out. Now, one thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this pin back around in place. That'll keep it up tight against the receiver here so that, you know, when we're flipping and rotating it around, we don't catch it and, you know, bend it out of shape or something. And uh, we don't, we don't want to do that, guys. We want to try to keep this and, you know, get it back in the same condition that we took it apart in, just cleaner. All right, so this is our bolt. And what, I'm going to go ahead and close this magazine, or at least push it there. There we go. All right, guys, we're going to slide our bolt back, and when it comes off the rail, it will just lift free. Now, that is your actually your, you know, your group there. That is your, like, your firing pin and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's okay if it comes off. It just kind of sits there. There's our bolt. Now, here's one of the really important parts. Most comm block, you know, you see that right there with the firing pin moving in and out. 
it should move free. This did not when I took it apart. Uh, just too much Cosmoline. You could even see some more on it already. It's just, there was just so much in this rifle, guys. Uh, pretty much most of your com block rifles, your AKs, your SKS, your SVDs, RPK, any type of system like that. I think even some of the American stuff has free floating firing pins. Uh, I want to say the M1 carbine, the M1 Garand, maybe even the M14. I, you know, I'm guessing on that one. It's pretty similar action. But uh, they all have free floating firing pins. There's no spring to return it. You know, it's just it's just there. And if it gets bound up with a bunch of grease and it gets stuck forward, you can have what's called a slam fire. And that is when the bolt travels forward to chamber the round, but your firing pin is stuck forward like so. And it will set off that cartridge or will. It, it can, it's a very high probability that it will. And, uh, I have actually had that happen before, not on any of my rifles. Uh, I was shooting with a guy and he purposely was jamming stuff into his firing pin mechanism to try to make it slam fire because I guess he thought it would be fun. And uh, let, me, let me tell you something guys, it, it is not fun. When you're not ready for it and you have no idea it's coming, it is not fun at all. It is terrible. And uh, yeah, ran three rounds right into the dirt. Luckily. I'm not an idiot and I am completely, you know, aware of where to point the muzzle and keep it, you know, in a safe direction. So, you know, we slammed three rounds into the dirt and after, you know, changing underwear and opening up the gun, I found all kinds of just stupid crap shoved into the firing pan. And I was like, dude, you really got to clean your gun. And then he informed me that it was intentional. So that's the last time I went shooting with that guy. He's a moron and you should not be trusted with firearms. All right, guys, at this point, we have our, you know, stuff taken out of the top here. You know, we can go ahead and flip the rifle over. Now, this is our safety lever right here. This is fire. That is safe. It needs to be in safe for what we're doing right here. And uh, if you can see this little pin against the back of the trigger guard, that is a spring-loaded pin, and it is stout, okay? That's basically what holds all this together right here. Now, this punch that I showed you earlier, we're going to take this punch. We are going to push this in. I'm going to set the rifle just off the edge of the table here. You can kind of see where I, I'm not, I don't really want to set it on the sight, so I kind of got it just rocked there on the receiver, you know. And we're going to try to push this in. Sometimes I go by hand. There we go. Uh, the first time I took it apart, I actually had to use a little rubber mallet, just kind of give it a tap. You don't want to, you know, beat the crap out of it, but, you know, just give it a little love tap. Now, once you get that out, you, you, the, trigger, uh, the trigger group has to come out before the magazine. So you just want to rock this forward, and it will lift right out. And if you can see those two little ears on the end there, those actually fit... I think it's kind of dark in here. You might not be able to see that. But there's just these little indents in here in the stock. And those, uh, that's that's where that fits. Let me let me take a look at that screen there. Let me see if I can point it out with the, uh, with the punch here. Right in there, guys, if you can see that. We got in here and in here. They, uh, that's where those little ears fit. And then the magazine, I'm going to use the rag to kind of get a grip through the grease. I'm just gonna lift on the back of this magazine. Oh, there it goes. And it will pop right out and you can give it a little force. It'll come right out. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it for your fire control group. We really don't have to take anything else right here down. Uh, the cleaning rod, we do need to get that out to uh, take the stock off, I believe. And uh, the way you do that is uh, you have to it, open the bayonet a little bit. And we'll, 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 just, we'll just start right here and walk forward. This is your gas tube, okay? Your upper hand guard and gas tube assembly. Also extremely important. This was packed so full of Cosmoline that there, I can guarantee you this rifle would not have cycled. I couldn't even move the gas tube plunger. The piston in there, the little short stroke piston that actually operates the whole cycling mechanism. Yeah, could not even budge it. I had to force it out with the cleaning rod. Now, here is another lever. Now, what we're gonna do is push this lever right about here. We will actually rotate it further in a second, but there is a spring-loaded pin in here, and once you rotate it past a certain point, that pin will come out. We don't wanna launch that across the room, 
So we want to, you know, make sure we retain that. So I'm going to just raise the rifle up a little bit. It's a little awkward when I can't see it, but I want to make sure you guys can see this. I was able to do this one by hand too. There we go. And we're just going to lift it up right there. It's kind of snug right there. And if you can see the top of this spring here, you see where this little thing that it's attached to, you see that rotating. You want that flat faced, okay? If you get that flat faced, your gas tube will lift straight out. All right, and you guide it off and you just pull forward, kind of wiggle it, there it is. You just lift it straight off and the end of that, guys, it just seats right there. It's just, it's, it's really fairly simple. All right, now we're gonna move on to the stock itself. All right, to do so, we simply pull down on this you know, bayonet lug. The bayonet will rotate. We don't wanna throw it all the way up yet, okay? When it's halfway, we simply lift the cleaning rod out of its little holder right there, if you can see that, and it will slide free. Some people say they have a lot of trouble getting the cleaning rod out. They say it's, you know, really stiff, hard to get out. Usually I find when that's the case, they usually have the bayonet like all the way, you know, up there, or they still have it all the way closed. And that can make it really difficult, guys, especially obviously there. Look at that. I mean, that's, you've got no room. Uh, usually they have, you know, it closed all the way. And, uh, you know, if you just kind of stick it about halfway, it kind of takes the pressure off. Now, now we're, we're pretty much done. We just need to get the stock off. And guys, that is as simple as grabbing the receiver and the stock and just lift. You're basically just opening it. Okay, and it's just really greasy. There it is, right there. And you just lift off the whole stuff. And there we go, guys. We're, we're completely field stripped. That simple. Now, these pieces here, your, uh, your trigger group, your magazine, your bolts, all these. Uh, what I like to do, guys, is I take a five gallon bucket. It doesn't even have to be five gallons. Just take a small bucket of some type and uh, you just, you know, you can put your, you know, mineral spirits. Where's my bottle at? There we go. There's my bottle. Uh, that is, uh, excuse me, that is uh, one quart, I believe. Yeah, one quart. It's usually enough, but be honest, with as much gunk as there was in this one, uh, you might want to do two. Uh, I, I probably should have got more. Uh, all I got left, really, is... Uh, is that my water? Oh, crap. Okay, one of these is water. One of these is... Manual spirits. One second. See, that one was sealed. So that's got that. Okay, that, that's water. Uh, guys, if you're gonna if you're gonna put something chemicals or something in a different container than what you got it out of, make sure you label it. Okay, that that's that's that can end up not being a great time. Uh, spray bottle. Spray bottle is extremely useful. Uh, you can put a little bit of your mineral spirits in there and just kind of give the, you know, like the action here, the, your barreled action, your receiver, just give them a good squirt. Uh, most of this little stuff I would recommend just putting in a bucket full of mineral spirits, you know, just submerging them in there, letting them rest for a little bit. And you know what? I need to show you this because I keep forgetting. Right here, you see this little end piece? That is, uh, the, that is one of the parts of your, your, uh, your, uh, Blah, 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 the word that I'm forgetting, the piston, there we go, look at that, that is a piston, gas piston, how many times can I say piston, all right, and look, I mean, it already has gunk on it again, and you can probably, you can probably see down there, all right, it's, it's okay, it's cleanish, uh, definitely needs more, I just kind of ran out of time last night, it's getting late, got a job to go to, you know, you know those job things that keep you from doing the fun stuff you want to do? Yeah, those. Uh, so you just wanna make sure you clean this out really good. One tip that I can give you that I seem to uh, have success with is uh, just take a piece of your paper towel, tear it, 
and just, you know, roll it up. Roll it up real tight. Want it up in here, and then you just want to twist it. Just, you know, if I rolled it up properly, this would work much better. There we go. I got some of it in there. Basically, as you just roll it up tight, you just twist it in there, take a cleaning rod, shove it through the end, and uh, you definitely want some paper towels laid down or, you know, something you don't mind throwing away, a piece of cardboard, because this thing just pooped out loads of grease when I shoved that paper towel down it. I mean, just a huge stream of grease out of the tube. Same thing out of the barrel. It was just pretty disgusting and very dirty. So after you get all this cleaned up, you know, you get all these done, you get them all cleaned up, you wipe them all down with your paper towels, and then you, you know, you can go through your stock here. Uh, there'll be, obviously there'll be some, I see I still got some too, guys. I'm gonna have to do another deep clean on this. Uh, you know, but really importantly at first is getting it out of your action, getting it out of your gas tubes, getting it out of that bulk carrier group. And uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll do another deep clean on this. You know, I'll, you know, heat it up and, uh, you know, wipe it down again. You know, we'll, we'll do this a couple of times. I'm, I'm kind of meticulous about that, but uh, there's that. And, uh, you know, I had a bunch around my sights and, uh, you know, you can just fix that up, clean underneath there. Uh, around your front sight. I couldn't even see my front sight, guys. It was just filled with Cosmoline. So, uh, Q-tip. That's uh, Q-tip's coming right there. And look at that. Look at that. I already got more right there. That's your gas port, guys. That's where the gas comes out of the barrel and helps cycle the action. And I'm going to get that right now because that irritates me. That irritates the crap out of me, dude. I just cleaned this thing like last night and I put it back together and it's better. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to get after that with the Q-tip, guys. They're still... There is still just grease all down in my gas system, man. Like, whoever was at the armory must have been really pissed off that day. Like, their, you know, their CO told them to go grease the rifles, and they didn't want to. And I think they literally just threw a bunch of rifles into the vat of Cosmoline that they may or may not have. It just left them there for, like, the weekend. I, I really, I am really... Struggling to understand how you managed to squeeze this much grease into one rifle. So, alrighty guys, give me just a second, and we are going to put this thing back together. Alrighty guys, we got our parts laid out in a big glorious heap here. And this, if this was you taking it apart for the first time, you would have, you know, stopped here to clean out all your stuff. Now, are you guys ready to put this back together? No. I was, I was waiting for the aye aye captain, but you know, that's what happens when you. Got kids, guys, you, uh, you watch a bunch of stupid crap and you get it stuck in your head forever. And then they grow out of it and it still haunts your dreams. And uh, yeah, just a, just an overall great time. All right, guys, we're gonna put the uh, stock back on. Pretty simple here. We're just gonna line this up. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> okay, we're gonna line up this part like we should, you know, right in there. And then just simply push it down, all right? And uh, I believe at this point, we can go ahead and put our cleaning rod back. And all that does is, you know, you're just reversing what you did, guys. You are literally just hit the rewind button. And boom, that's in place. We'll close the bayonet. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and do the trigger group first. The reason I wanna do that first is because to get your trigger assembly back in, you really got to put some pressure down on the rifle. I mean, a lot of pressure, okay? And I don't want, you know, all my bolt and everything that round, you know, to rock back and forth on the table. It just seems to make it a little bit easier when I have this nice squared off surface. Uh, I don't know if I want to do it on steel. We may go over here to the rubber or wood table. Uh, we'll give it a shot and see what we can do, though. It's, it's soft metal, so it might be okay. All right. All right yeah, so... We're gonna start with our magazine because you know we took that out last. We're reversing it so it goes in first. Uh, we're gonna line our little notch up back here in the stock. It just kind of rocks right in and put a little pressure down. Boom, clicks right in place. Now the trigger, those little ears that we looked at, those will go right in like so, except I'm holding it upside down. So, you know, what happens if you're looking in a mirrored image, guys, you, uh, you look stupid. So let's, you know, get our ears down in there. 
just like that. Now, here's the part. This is probably the hardest part of putting the whole thing together, and it's still really not that bad. What we're gonna do, just like we did earlier, I'm gonna set my front sights off of this so I don't push down on them. Make sure that your little selector is pushed in. I'm just gonna put my weight on it, guys. Just put your palm right there. Right there, you hear a loud click. Do not worry, you did not break it. Look at that. It is in there, okay? That's beautiful, that's perfect. You gorgeous little bean sprouts, you did it. You did it, and I love you so much. This is really weird, isn't it? Yeah, you know what? Let's just move on, move on. Next part, uh, our bolt. Okay, guys, let's get our, oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead, aren't I? Yep, I mean, you could put the bolt in if you wanted, but uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and put our gas tube in. You know, because you kind of need that. So, uh, gas tube back in. It's been one of those days, guys. You know, don't judge. We all have them days. All right. We simply put the little round end down here. And then all you do is uh, just rock it. Just rock it down, guys. You know, you want to... Oh, you know what? I completely forgot... I did not show you how to take this captured spring now. Shame on me. Shame on me. I'm a bad doctor, guys. You know what? We're going to show you right now, okay? There is a little plunger in here. Spring loaded. Very, very stout spring. You just want to put your palm right here, okay? Just push your hand up against that because when you lift this up all the way, it is going to come out of there and it will launch if you are not careful. So, you'll, you'll probably hear it. Right there, okay? Then I'm just gonna simply pull, let the pressure off, you know, go forward. Boom, just like that. Little plunger, I cleaned that up pretty good. Uh, yeah, this was packed full of grease too. Everything in this rifle was, it's ridiculous. So, uh, you know, there's that. Now, uh, you know, okay, if we clean that, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna push that back in there, okay? We're probably gonna need our punch to do that. Cause like I said, this spring is very stout. There it is. Now all we can do is just simply push the lever back down while holding pressure forward. And I did not get it in there all the way. Yep. So that's what happens, guys. And just, you know, just gotta be careful, guys. Don't, you know, don't let that thing fly away because it can be tough to find. All right, there we go. Did it right that time. Look at you. All right, now we put our gas block. Now, if you'll notice something real quick, I pushed this down too far, and this is not flush. I will not be able to get the gas block back on. Very simple. All we do is lift it back up until you feel the kind of tension. Don't want to keep going because you'll launch that thing out again. Now, gas block lines up. People are lucky I'm lazy. I would retape that whole segment just to not look stupid. There it is. Just push that down, put a little pressure, push it down, push your lever back down, and then just kind of give it a give it a good tug. You want to make sure that thing is secure on there. You know, nobody nobody wants a handguard rocketing into space on their first shot. Alright. Now we can do the bolt group, okay? Very simple, it goes together very easy. Now remember your bolt handle is right here. So what we do is you see your little hook here, okay? Your little fish hook looking thing. And you see you have a very similar fish hook looking thing here. Just like that, okay? They, they fit just like that. Very simple. And you just want to set that in there like so slide the whole mechanism forward, forward, oh, you know what, magazine, so what happens when you close the magazine, I forgot that the, it was holding pressure on it, all right guys, recoil spring, it only goes in one way, and that is the straight in all the way there, and the curly in back here. No, I'm kidding. It totally does. All right, what you do, guys, is push this forward. You just want to rest it right here on this little doohickey. 
All right, what that's going to do is allow us to put the dust cover on without any spring resistance. And we will undo our pin again. Remember, this is the one we used to take it out. Slide it all the way out. And final piece, dust cover. Simply slide into place. Make sure we're all lined up. You wanna push your pin back through. Close it down, you'll hear it click. Everything's secure, right? Now, remember that recoil spring, it's not in position. We're gonna go ahead and open our magazine to disable the bolt catch. And all you do, guys, is give that bolt a pull and you'll hear the recoil spring actually lift up and snap into place. Hear how loud that was, a big pop. That was your recoil spring setting against the back of the receiver and now, we're back together. All right, guys, let's do a function test. Go ahead and close our magazine. Maybe. There we go. All right. Bolt locks back. The bolt catch works. Very good. We're going to apply pressure backwards, push down on the magazine, and that's just going to allow us to roll it forward without slamming our hand because nobody wants to do that. All right. Safety is forward. So when we pull this trigger, which, don't forget, guys, we are unloaded. We are pointing in a safe direction. I know you can't see what's on the other side of that, but I can promise you it is open fields for good God knows how many miles. So, you know, don't worry, we're okay. We're being safe. Oh, what happened? Nothing, safety's on. All right, now, safety down. And boom, there's the trigger. All right, guys, we are back together. We are all functional. And it should be nice and clean. That's really all there is to it. The SKS is a very simple rifle to operate, very simple to take apart. Uh, it's a good, rugged, reliable rifle. And if you're just getting into mill serps and you have, you know, a, a lot of questions, uh, there is a lot of guys that are really into it. I myself am into it. I love to collect them. My brother's huge into it. He probably has way more than I do. Uh, there's just something... There's just a romance, okay, about a old rifle that is, you know, probably seen combat that has been in, issued, you know, to somebody. You know, you buy a gun off the shelf, guys. It doesn't have those stories. It doesn't have those memories attached to it. And it's just super cool. Like, look at this one, okay? I don't know how well you can make this out. This has what they call trench art on it, okay? Yeah, some, some dude, you know, carved that in with a knife or something. Uh, you know, I no idea what that says. You know, probably something in Chinese. Uh, if any of you can make that out and can translate it into English, I would love to hear about it. But, you know, this is just an amazing, just cool rifle. You know, they just, they're so awesome. And, uh, one, you know, one pro that people will, you know, throw out there a lot is, Oh, the aftermarket's huge. You know what, guys? Aftermarket isn't something I look for in a Milserp. Uh, ammo availability is up there. Of course, this is 762 by 39. It shoots all of the same steel case you know, that the AK shoot. Uh, it, it'll run almost anything, guys. If you're not picky, I don't even like talking aftermarket for Milserps, okay? It makes me sick to my stomach. I can't tell you how many times I walk into a pawn shop and, you know, I catch the, you know, vague outline of a nice, you know, 03 Springfield or some cool old rifle and, you know, I get all giddy and then I get over there and it's just been molested by some hillbilly in his trailer. All right, they cut the sights off, they cut the stock off, they spray paint it. You know, I just, I just want to throw up, all right? You know, th these are very good rifles, they're very reliable. Uh, they're okay. They're, for accuracy, they're all right, guys. They're, they're not the most accurate rifle in the world. I mean, how far are you really shooting, guys? Most of us don't shoot past a couple, you know, a couple hundred yards. We're plink, you know, we plink with them at the range, you know, shoot a hog, shoot a deer, you know. They are, they're perfect for that, okay? But, you know, if you're new to this and you really don't know much about SKSs, guys, I, I implore you, do some research. Watch, you know, watch some good videos on it, guys. There's a lot of good info out there. You know, uh, if you go to a pawn shop or you go to a gun show, I guarantee, I guarantee it, you are going to run into some crazy old man who took his SKS, you know, put some, you know, Archangel or Tapco plastic stock on there, you know, drilled holes into this freaking dust cover, 
put a scope on there and you know he's going to tell you how he can take deer at 500 yards with his rifle you know what that old man's full of crap okay he is just a dumb old man who likes to spend his free time you know just molesting beautiful you know pieces of history and he thinks it makes them valuable okay these rifles are not expensive okay most of the times you can find a decent sks for under about three to four hundred dollars but the chinese ones like this uh you know they're they're on the lower end. Uh, they're still very good, very reliable. And uh, I think you can usually find these for around three, 350. I think that's kind of about the about what I paid for this one. Uh, the Yugoslavian ones may be a little bit more. They're real good. The Russian ones do run a little bit higher, but they are incredible. And uh, if you do happen to run into some of those crazy old men that love to, you know, bubba out an SKS, Definitely don't buy it unless you decide you want to, you know, redo it and put a wood stock or something on it. You know, you kind of rescue it, you know, take it from an abusive home and give it a nice, loving, beautiful home. You can put touching music to a video montage or something. But you know what? When you run into people like that, guys, don't get mad. Don't yell at them. Uh, they just don't know any better, okay? They're old. They're crazy. Just take their information We'll send it to Brandon Herrera, and he can go beat him with a piece of rebar for being such an idiot. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, hope you learned something in the middle of all my ramblings. Uh, I'm not exactly a pro at this. It's just something I have a passion for, I love to do. And I hope that something got through and you were able to at least, you know, put yours back together decently and... You know, hope maybe you learned one or two things. That's all. That's all that. All that I ask that you. You know, you can at least learn one thing from my weirdness and my craziness. And thank you for tuning in, guys. If you enjoy this, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I would really like to break. You know, the single digit subscribers. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, I think I have my grandma and a couple of friends from high school. So you know, guys, if you enjoy this, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, maybe I'll do some more of these. You know, I gotta. I got some pretty neat rifles that uh, I'll be happy to show off. Uh, I've got some cool stuff coming in that I would love to be able to test out and, you know, give you a decent review of. So, you know, hopefully I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.